Seventh graders, we are starting a new unit. So you need your unit four note packet out. We are gonna work with variables and expressions today. We're gonna to be translating algebraic expressions. Our goal is I can create algebraic expressions using variables. Go ahead and underline algebraic expressions and variables. Let's refresh our mind on what variables are and what expressions are. This is not in your notes. Just follow along with me. Talk out loud. See if you can fill in the blanks. Variable. A blank for a number we do not know yet. Hmm. A symbol. A variable is a symbol that represents a number, and we don't know what that number is yet. And now in math, you use letters to represent variables. In elementary school, you might have used empty boxes or smiley faces. An expression. Number, symbols, and blank grouped together that show the value of something. What goes in that blank? Operators. Here are some examples of expressions. 2 plus x, that's an algebraic expression because we have an unknown value in there. 4 times the group, 2 plus 3, that's a numerical expression because we know what every number is. 3b, that means 3 times b a divided by five, these are examples of expressions. Commutative property of addition and multiplication, this is a really nice property to recall. It says the order that you add does not matter. The order that you multiply does not matter. What do you mean by that, Mrs. Kluber? Well, 10 plus two, that's the same as two plus 10, exact same sum. Three times five, that is the exact same product as five times three. Notice in the first part, two and 10 just change spots. In the second one, Three and five just change spots. You still get the same product. So it doesn't matter the order that you're adding. You're going to get the same sum. It doesn't matter the order that you're multiplying. You're going to get the same product. Find your 4.1 notes now and open up to that first chunk. You're going to see a table that looks similar to mine here. Go ahead and pause the video. Copy down the keywords or phrases that you see for each operation. Let's look at the next chunk in our notes and we're gonna start translating. We're first gonna start translating where we're working with words like sum, difference, product, quotient. So using your chart above if you need to, sum, what operation does that refer to? Addition, go ahead and put a plus there. Difference, what operation does that refer to? Subtraction. Product, look above if you're not sure, what operation does that refer to? Multiplication. Now remember, there are lots of ways to show multiplication, right? You can use the dot, there's the multiplication symbol, and there's invisible. That says invisible multiplication. We are really gonna focus on the invisible multiplication. Quotient, that refers to division. And we're gonna use the fraction bar to represent division. Let's go to some examples. The sum of a number and 10. Whenever you're dealing with these fancy, very professional words for our operations, you wanna to go to the and. Write that next to the star. Go to the and. The and is actually where you will put your plus sign, your subtraction sign, your multiplication sign, and your division sign. So let's look at this. We have the sum of a number and 10. Sum is involved, we're gonna go to the and. This actually translates to be your plus sign. Sum is involved, we're also gonna bring in a parenthesis right before the word sum, and the other one right at the end of the phrase, and then at the end we'll ask if we need it. It says a number. Do you get to pick any number you want? No, you need to use a variable to represent a number that can change. So let's translate. The sum of a number, let's use x to represent that number, and 10. Now, is there anything outside my parentheses? No. So you know what? This phrase does not translate to a grouping phrase. So I do not need the parentheses. The translation would just be your variable plus 10. You could switch this around, right? You could also write it like this. 
Commutative property, remember when I refreshed your mind on that, you can change the order of what you're adding and it doesn't change the sum. Right here, we have the difference of 15 and a number. We're using that fancy word that means subtract. So we're gonna go to the and, and this actually translates to be our minus sign. Difference is involved. We're gonna bring in a parenthesis right before difference and right at the end of the expression. A number, do you get to pick any number you want? No, you need to use a variable to represent that. So let's go ahead and let's use x for this one again. Let's translate the difference of 15 and a number. Ms. Kluver forgot to bring in her parenthesis before and at the end. So now I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna ask myself, do I need the parenthesis? Is there anything outside the grouping symbol? No, so this is not a grouping translation. The correct translation would just be 15 minus x. Now, could you switch it and write x minus 15? No, because there's no commutative property for subtraction. Here we have the product of x and seven. I see and, and I'm using that fancy word product. So this translates to be my multiplication symbol. Now remember, we're gonna use our invisible multiplication symbol because we wanna prepare ourselves for working in algebra. We wanna prepare ourselves for working with equations. Product, we don't bring in a parenthesis there because if you think about it, multiplication and division, they both come before addition or subtraction, so it doesn't matter anyway. So we have the product of, a num of x, excuse me, and seven. We're gonna write it like this, seven times x. Notice the invisible multiplication. Notice how I made seven come first, okay? We do not wanna see this, x times seven. No, no. We wanna see it as seven times the variable or the number times the variable. So thank you, commutative property, order doesn't matter. Seven times x is the same as x times seven, but this is not how we want to write it. We want to write it like this, so please take note of that. Next, we have the quotient of a number and 24. Quotient means divide, so I'm gonna put my fraction bar on top of the and. That translates to the and, or to the division symbol. Do I get to pick any number I want? No, I need to use a variable, a symbol to represent that. So we have the quotient of a number and 24. There's the translation. So when it comes to our professional words for add, subtract, multiply, divide, we wanna make sure we go to the and. And that's, that and actually translates to the operation that we're working with. Also, invisible multiplication, we wanna show it like this, not using the dot, not using the x, because if we use the x, we don't know if it's a variable or a multiplication symbol. When it comes to division, we wanna use the fraction bar to represent division. Let's go to the back and look at what's next. It says, how do you translate turn around words? Think about when you turn around or you kind of walk around, it's almost like you're walking to the back. So turn around words, go ahead and do this next to the star. We want a box and turn them around, bring them to the back. So we wanna take to the back, okay? Let's look at this, we have 14 less than a number. A number is actually what we're starting with. So this 14 less than, even though it comes first with the words here, it actually needs to get turned around and come after a number. It's a turnaround phrase. So we have a number, we don't get to pick any number, we need to use a symbol that represents a number we don't know yet. So let's this time use N. N, and we have less than means subtract, right? Look at that chart in the front of your notes if you don't believe me. We have 14 less than that. So 14 less than a number looks like this. That's This phrase right here is called a turnaround. A number fewer than 20. So 20 is actually what we're starting with. A number fewer than, it's kinda like less than. It's actually a synonym. Fewer than is a synonym with less than. It's a turnaround phrase as well, so it needs to come to the back. Box and bring to the back. A number, do I get to pick any number I want? 
No, be mindful of that. We need to use a variable to represent it. So a number fewer than 20, here we go. A number fewer than 20. Three subtracted from x. Subtracted, we know that that means minus, right? And that from x means we're starting with x and we're subtracting three from it. When it comes to subtraction, order matters. What you put first needs to make sure that it fits the translation. Because think about this, 10 minus five, I'm gonna write this over here. 10 minus five, that is not the same as five minus 10, right? There's no commutative property, this does not work. So you have to be very careful with how you're setting this up. So subtracted from, three subtracted from x is a turnaround phrase. It needs to come after the x. So we're gonna box all of this and bring it to the back. That means we start with this. Six taken from m. Taken from is very similar, like subtracted from, fewer than, less than. Six taken from is a turnaround phrase. So we're gonna bring it to the back. Or they're turnaround words, meaning we're starting with m, and we're taking six from that. 12 more than half of a number. There are a couple operation words going on in there. Right away, I see turnaround words, more than. And more than, if you look at our chart on the front side of our notes, refers to adding. So this turnaround phrase can come at the back, but remember when we're dealing with adding, commutative property can be applied. We'll talk about that in a moment. Half, sometimes I need to see what the words look like um, using numbers, of a number. Do I get to pick any number I want? No, I'm gonna use a variable. When you're taking a number of another number, remember then of means multiply. So we're starting with the back part of our expression here. We have half of a number, right? One half times m, and I have 12 more than that. More than means plus. Now remember, multiplication and division go so nicely together. So when you say half of a number, you can also, write that as a number divided by two, right? If you think of 12, what's half of 12? In your head, you probably go 12 divided by two. And dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. What's the reciprocal of two? A half. Keep switch flip, right? So you can also write this expression as your number, which Ms. Kluver used the variable m, so I better stick with that. Your number divided by two plus 12. Another way to think about this is that commutative property. This collection of terms right here and this term right here, you can switch them. You could go 12 plus 1 half m. Or over here, you could switch them too and you could say 12 plus half of m because a commutative property. You would still be dealing with the multiplication first before you added so it's not gonna change the value there. So there are four ways to see this expression. So you just did these four problems on your own and you checked your answers with mine. I wanna talk about the last two here. When it comes to six more than one third of x, this problem is similar to the 12 more than half a number problem up here, where when you're taking a fraction of a number, right, you can also write that as a division problem. And since you're adding the other term in these expressions, you could also switch it around. Six plus one third times x, and then six plus x divided by three. Those are also equivalent expressions to our original one here. And for the last one, my guess is maybe you forgot the grouping symbol. Notice when you translated this one, right, that there was a value outside the parentheses. That means then we need to group nine minus x on the inside because we're taking two times whatever that difference is. So we need to keep our grouping symbols on there. Don't forget that when you're working with summer difference to bring the parentheses in before the word summer difference and then at the end of the expression and ask if you need it. If there's something on the outside, then we need it. 
Let's look at these real world problems. We need to write an expression to represent what is stated. So I think the hardest part when it comes to real world problems is identifying what word represents the variable. Remember a variable represents a number that we don't know or a number that can change. A hotel room costs $125 per night plus a $25 cleaning fee. Write an expression for the cost of renting a room for any number of nights. So first of all, it tells me right here, any number of nights. Nights represents a number and that number can change or we don't know it, right? It could be one night, it could be two nights, it could be three nights. So there's our variable. Let's let N represent nights. A hotel room costs $125 per night. So this is for every or for each night. Plus, so this right here means multiply. This right here means, well, you know what that means, a $25 cleaning fee. So let's go ahead and translate. So we have $125 per night. So times N, that means times N, plus a $25 cleaning fee. There's the expression. Now I could plug, let's say I'm gonna stay one night at the hotel. If I plug a one in, 125 times one is 125, plus 25 is 150. I'm gonna spend $150 for that one night. If I'm gonna spend two nights, I could plug it in. Do you see how the value of the variable can change there? Let's look at the next one. Joe has two less than four times as many pencils P than Sarah. Write an expression for the number of pencils that Joe has. I like these, they feel like puzzles. Everything with algebra to me feels like a puzzle and so there's a little bit of excitement with it. I see a turnaround phrase right away. Here's the end of my expression. This right here just tells me what to do. So I'm gonna box in my turnaround words, two less than, and I'm gonna bring it to the end of the expression. Then I have four times as many pencils, P. There is my variable, pencils. P represents pencils, then Sarah. So we're gonna start right here because the turnaround words tell us they're coming in at the end. We have four, I'm gonna write it underneath the line here, times P, and I have two less than that, so minus two. Now, could I write this more professionally? Absolutely. Invisible multiplication, that's what we wanna work with. So instead of doing four dot P, I'm gonna do four P right next to each other, minus two. This expression represents the number of pencils that Joe has. Let's sum up what we just did. We translated algebraic expressions written in words into algebraic expressions using symbols, operations, and numbers. Whenever we're dealing with our professional words, some difference product quotient, remember, go to the and. That translates to be your operation symbol. Also, when we're dealing with multiplication, we wanna focus on using invisible multiplication. So seven times X, that's how we wanted to write that, even though over here it was X times seven. Commutative property says we can change the order and it's not gonna change our product. When it comes to division, remember we wanna to work to use the fraction bar to represent division. This will help us get even more ready for working in algebra. Next, when it comes to sum or difference, remember to bring in your grouping symbols right before the word sum and right at the end, right before the word difference and right at the end, and then ask if you need it. The other piece I wanna sum up with you refers to our turnaround words. Those tend to be really tricky. So look for them, box and bring them to the back. Remind yourself of that. Pay attention to when you're dealing with fractions and you're multiplying a fraction to another number. It's the same as dividing by the reciprocal or vice versa. So pay attention to that.